Hello and welcome to Meet the Candidates. I'm the general manager here at Medfield TV, Brett Poirier, and I'm sitting down with one of the Republican, well, the Republican Senate candidate, uh, Jacob That's Ventura. Right. Jacob, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you, it's good to be here. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm sure at this point, I know you were knocking on doors today uh, as right. you're in Medfield. Uh, so a lot in of the, people- In the rain. To, yeah. yeah, in the <laughs> rain, in the pouring rain coming out. Uh, most people are probably surprised to see you today, right? That's right, that's right. Yeah, it, We've got a, a, a very loyal and great dedicated uh, campaign staff. Uh, we've uh, been knocking on doors uh, in nine, nine uh, municipalities. So. so you're uh, meeting a lot of the people, but uh, for those that, that don't know you, tell me, uh, tell me a little about yourself, uh, where you're from and, and yeah. where you're living and stuff. Uh, sure, I was born and raised in uh, southeastern Massachusetts in Dartmouth. Um, went to public schools. I was a, a first uh, generation college graduate uh, through some hard work, worked part-time at a uh, at Sears, actually. I don't think they're doing too well right now, <laughs> but uh, uh, worked part-time at Sears, uh, helped pay my way through uh, college, was the first in my family to graduate, uh, earned a finance degree at UMass, and um, <clears throat> ultimately a few years later went to law school down in Virginia, and uh, I'm now licensed in Massachusetts um, to practice law. Um, I am I come from Native American uh, ancestry. I'm part of the Wampanoag tribe from Martha's Vineyard. Uh, also Portuguese and Cape Verdean, so uh, a diverse mix. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I really got my start in public service at a young age. Uh, had been involved in politics and campaigns. Um, and uh, you know, one day I was working. I was in the, the banking industry in Boston, uh, up at J.P. Morgan, and I decided I was in my cubicle, you know, punch, punching away numbers on the calculator and. Uh, I decided, gosh, maybe it's time for a career change. Uh, I loved finance, but um, at that point, I decided to parlay <clears throat> into a career at the State House with uh, State Representative Stephen Howitt, who's the, the state rep in the southernmost portion of this district down in Seekonk and Rehoboth, and uh, spent a few years at the State House with him. Um, and that experience there was probably the most uh, formative of, and uh, prepared me the most to be a candidate for the Senate here in Medfield and throughout the district. So. So you just gave us a whole lot to go off of there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start back. So what I, I found really interesting what you just said there. You're the first to graduate college from your family. I mean that must right. be a really point of pride for not only you but but your whole family. That's yeah, my awesome. my I have a great family, mother and father. Uh, my brother was the second to graduate, so he's he's doing uh, well for himself. Is uh, that a race between the two of you? <laughs> I'm four years older, so yes, uh, it not wasn't, much of a it race. It wasn't close, but uh, you know he's doing very well and. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, for me, I didn't think about it as a first-generation college graduate. I just went through the motions, worked hard, and uh, um, studied, or tried to study, and prepared for finals like every other college kid. So, uh, but you know, I graduated it and uh, proud of it. So, that's awesome. <coughs> now, uh, so you're at J.P. Morgan. You you uh, you decide I don't want to do this job anymore. <laughs> How is it that you got into the state house? Like, what was your foothold that that got you there? Right. So I. Uh, I started off at the age of 18 as a young Republican, uh, college Republican or whatever they call it. And uh, you know, in Massachusetts, there aren't many of us. So uh, you go to fundraising events and networking events and you help out a candidate here or there. Um, I managed a campaign uh, back in 2010, but it's a small network of people, you know, not too many Republicans. And uh, uh, when Steve Howitt won in 2010, um, at that point, I think he knew for, through mutual friends that I was looking to get into the State House and uh, serve. And uh, <clears throat> it was interesting. I, I went to his home to meet with him and his wife for what was to be an informal meeting. And I showed up in a suit during a Patriots <laughs> game. And his wife said on the spot, hire this guy. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, we've gotten along. Uh, and uh, you know, we've uh, been through a lot and served a lot of people. And uh, I think that's what this uh, job is in the legislature is to serve. So, I know that you probably have had a hundred thousand different experiences in that job. Is there one that kind of stands out for you? Was there a moment that you're like, "Wow, this is definitely what I want to be doing"? Yeah. Um, again, countless uh, stories from constituents. Uh, we've dealt with home heating assistance for vet uh, for veterans and seniors. Uh, we've dealt with. Uh, placing children, uh, helping adults place their adult children in supervised daycare uh, with disabilities. Uh, we've received monies for local school projects, uh, whether it's general local aid or uh, roof replacement, window replacement. Um, you know, one of the first uh, 
no pun intended, one of the first concrete things I was able to see my, uh, my services, uh, it was in Seekonk on Route 44, a state road. Uh, one of the business owners had called the office and complained, you know, I've got a pothole here and the state has spent, you know, six months giving me the runaround and I need this filled and, uh, you know, <laughs> After about a week, Steve Howitt and I were able to get it filled, and you know, so that was our first concrete uh, 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 solution. But you know, as small as a pothole, or uh, uh, I remember Hurricane uh, Tropical Storm Sandy at the time when it uh, uh, pummeled the southeast. Uh, we had in Rehoboth multiple uh, uh, animal emergencies. It's a very rural community. We had senior citizens without power who couldn't get uh, clean water or keep their medicines cool. Um, so you never know what you're gonna. Be prepared. Uh, you're going to get, but you do need to be prepared, and you need to serve. Um, and so that's what it's about: making a difference, even if it's as small as a pothole, or uh, making sure utility uh, poles are up and people have power after a storm. So that's that's amazing. I mean, to <coughs> to see the impact of you know a Senate candidate or or a representative uh, to be able to to call someone and, and trust that they're going to get the job done. It's that's that's a pretty great statement. Yeah, yeah, and and the key is you know and. The thing I learned uh, early on uh, in the House of Representatives, and the same is for the Senate, um, you know, you have legislators, you can go up to Beacon Hill and you can sit at committee hearings and you can go to fancy dinners and, um, you know, go to the chamber and vote yay or nay on legislation. And all of that is important, relationships and uh, passing legislation. But um, at the end of the day, it's about servicing your communities. Um, and I. Uh, through our campaign, I've been, again, I think I've been the only candidate over the course of the last 18 months. This has been almost a presidential campaign for me now uh, between the two races, but the only candidate to knock on as many doors as I have. And uh, A, I do it to win, uh, but B, it's a, uh, a great experience to really know the district. Uh, every street, every household, um, and uh, that will better inform me in the Senate when I'm, you know, uh, hopefully uh, serving the people here. So. So you're out here in the rain. You're coming to Medfield. You're knocking on doors. Why? <laughs> why are you doing this? What, what, what's your What's your reason why? Why you're running for the seat? Again, I think we covered it. It's service. Um, it's to serve the people. Uh, to bring good governance back. Um, uh, to have people feel uh, confident in their government. I, we live in a day and age, uh, especially in 2018, where um, there's a lot going on in the world and there's a lot going on in Washington D.C. But uh, here at home, I think uh, we've got uh, uh, to bring some stability. I think I can do that. Um, I was endorsed by Governor Baker and a lot of the local uh, uh, state legislative members and uh, local officials as well, uh, including here in town. And uh, I think bringing stability and making sure we focus at home, avoiding the noise of Washington and just uh, getting the job done. You know, whether it's again, filling potholes, uh, getting money back for our schools, which is very important to me, servicing the, uh, the senior citizen population, veterans, uh, the disabled, uh, protecting our environment. Those are the issues that uh, we're trying to get accomplished. So. Now, uh, <coughs> we'll get to the big picture of, at, up at Beacon Hill, but what are some of the things, I know that you have some ideas about Medfield specifically, <coughs> some things that uh, uh, you've talked about. Um, what, what's your plans with Medfield if you, if you do go on, if we look in the future and you win this seat? What's going on with Medfield for you? Sure. Um, when I first got into this race, again, almost a year and a half ago, uh, I had the uh, fortunate uh, uh, situation of being endorsed by Representative Sean Dooley, who represents half of the town. Um, and Sean, uh, Representative Dooley is a great guy. He's been uh, uh, keeping me informed of uh, the happenings of Medfield and some of the issues that him and I have talked about at length, uh, are, you know, overzealous uh, housing developers here. Uh, abusing the 40B laws, that's a huge issue uh, that needs to be addressed. I know he's been up there on Beacon Hill fighting that fight. Uh, it's something I would partner with him on. Um, public housing is important, but we need to make sure it's not a one-size-fits-all approach and give the town some flexibility. And uh, I would be looking to give Medfield as much flexibility as possible. Uh, w comply with the law, but not allow mass housing developments uh, to change the character of the town. Um, <coughs> Medfield State Hospital is another issue that we've discussed in the past, um, working with uh, the state DCR who controlled parcels of land. Um, you know, I think ultimately with Medfield State, uh, I think we ought to let the people of Medfield and the town continue to go through the process 
uh, to determine what's best for Medfield. Um, and as a senator, I'll work with uh, uh, DCR to ensure the open space elements that I know are important to people here, uh, preserving open space and recreation. Uh, additionally, I think uh, promoting the arts economy here as well. Um, Medfield has a huge arts uh, population, and uh, I forget what the percentage is of uh, the local economy, but it's pretty significant. And uh, I think Medfield State uh, Hospital might be a good uh, haven uh, development for some artists as well, or some studios. You've been uh, watching a little bit of Medfield TV or something? A little we, bit, a little we bit. Just, <laughs> we just talked about this. Really? Yeah, we just yeah. talked about this uh, on Medfield TV. Um, you know, and that's another issue. Uh, uh, when I go door to door, I, I uh, visit a lot of senior citizens. Um, of course, uh, living in Medfield comes with a price, property taxes, and just like every other uh, nice community. And uh, we need to do something on a state level uh, to allow municipalities more flexibility with the law. Uh, if a municipality decides to, uh, to go this route to give uh, senior citizens above the age of, for example, 65 on fixed incomes, um, a freeze in their property tax increases. Uh, I think that would go a long way. And um, I think that's probably the number one issue people talk about on the doors, yeah, which is interesting. I didn't expect that, but uh, Absolutely, it's well, that we'll spe look at. specifically <coughs> here in Medfield, I mean, five overrides were passed right. uh, this past year. So that's definitely something that I'm sure is on the minds of a lot of residents out there. But we talked about this as you were coming through the door. Um, <coughs> Medfield, I, I won't tell people where you ranked Medfield, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but it was definitely, it's a beautiful community. And we talked yeah. about this. Uh, yeah. it was, it's one that, you know, I didn't know about until I got here, started working in it. It's a beautiful right. community. And a is, lot of people are concerned with keeping it the way <coughs> that it is and keeping it, um, you know, Medfield. Right. And uh, for the record, uh, it's my favorite community. I don't know <laughs> if I should say that. <laughs> the people here have been wonderful. Uh, I won this town twice last year, so I'm, uh, uh, I love the town. But uh, the schools are some of the best in the nation. But like you said, um, keeping the, the, uh, the town characteristics, I think, are important. Um, making sure the downtown is vibrant, businesses are supported. And, uh, you know, if uh, residents decide they want to increase their commercial base, uh, which a lot of towns uh, ultimately end up doing. We do it in a way that uh, maintains the uh, integrity and characteristics of this town. You so. know, one of the things <coughs> I think that's always interesting about running for a race is you're essentially asking people to vote their confidence in you and, and say, you know, this is something that um, we believe we're going to put our livelihood kind of in your hands a little bit, right? Sure. You've won Medfield a couple times now. What's That's that? Right. What's that mean for you? You know that that this town essentially has voted for you a couple times, or yeah. you know, what's that mean? Uh, it's it's a huge honor. Uh, it's a huge honor. Um, and if I'm fortunate enough, I think I will be. But if I'm fortunate enough in uh, a few weeks after November sixth to get this job and get elected, uh, I will uh, treat it as a huge honor. And uh, ultimately, I'm only doing this to serve. That's it. Um, I'm an attorney, as I mentioned, uh, and uh, I for, uh, delayed my legal career to do this. This was a unique opportunity when uh, Senator Timothy at the time resigned, um, and uh, folks in my party uh, had urged me to run, and uh, I'm in it 100%, and uh, so I want to make a difference and serve and uh, uh, do the best I can and uh, represent the people here. So. Now, uh, you talked a little bit about uh, Medfield specifically. Uh, is there anything big on Beacon Hill? You know, is there anything big uh, statewide that you're looking to get involved with and get your hands dirty on? Sure. Um, so my background, uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned this. I was a former uh, local official as well um, in Massachusetts uh, on the Finance Committee. So I understand budgets, municipal budgets. I understand the relationship that towns and uh, cities have with the state, the reliance on local aid. Um, mostly chapter 90 and 70, those are the two big ones. So um, having that experience, uh, I've pledged to go up to Beacon Hill and advocate for more local aid without raising taxes. You know, I, I think we talked about this in the debate last year and uh, um, it is possible. Um, and uh, Governor Baker, I think, has done a good job at managing government to the best of his ability. Uh, so services remain um, to a great standard, but uh, we do it in a more efficient way. And uh, it, there are uh, many, many efficiencies that you can find in state government uh, where I would argue you can increase the level of services and decrease the cost. It just takes uh, smart reforms. Uh, we have to do it in a bipartisan manner, of course, 
Um, but that would be one of the, the key issues, trying to find some savings at the state level uh, without raising taxes, keep the, the standard of services high, and uh, ultimately increase local aid distributions with those savings. So chapter 90, chapter 70, uh, and that's roads and uh, bridges, overpasses, and then schools. Those are the, t the, uh, the two big ones for me, so. And now, uh, how do you ex expect to get things done uh, you know, up at the legislation? What, what's gonna be your technique in getting around that political climate? Sure, and again, I've spent some time up there. Uh, I think uh, I'm fortunate in the fact that most of my friends on Beacon Hill are Democrats, <laughs> mostly because most of them up there are Democrats. Um, but when I was a staff member, I had a, a great opportunity, again, to, to watch many of the local reps in this region and the senators uh, work together and, again, the issues I'm talking about, these local issues, um, they're not Democrat or Republican issues. These are issues that people care about. Uh, I, I, I know and respect uh, the Democrat representative here in Medfield very well. I've worked with her. I've worked with Sean Dooley. I've worked with Jim Timothy uh, in the past. And um, these issues are bipartisan or probably nonpartisan, quite frankly. And uh, I think, um, you know, ultimately to get things done, uh, you have to respect people. You have to get along with people. Uh, and uh, fortunately, I already, most of them I consider my friends. So I think that will help in terms of passing legislation and moving uh, funding. So Yeah, not being from the area, uh, we <coughs> have a representative that happens to be Betty Poirier. That's um, right. Yeah, and she works both sides and she does a great job. Um, but that's, it's one of the things I think that's really unique about Massachusetts is a lot of the people do a good job of working both sides. And you see that with a lot of the, the, the better representatives and senators out yeah. there, they're able to do that. So it's definitely, a, it's pretty great that, that yeah. you have that. And I'm happy to have Betty's you. endorsement as well down in Attleboro. She is phenomenal. Uh, she can walk into any room and just light the room up. And uh, I need to, you know, uh, you know, she'll walk into a senior center and they, they just love her. So uh, it's a good uh, example to follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, people at Metro are like, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, but yeah of course. I, yeah, you know, I'm telling you, she's great. She's she is, great. She is. Um, but now, uh, so now what, uh, what differs you, uh, you know, for the people at home, what, what differences do you see in yourself than your uh, uh, opponent? To this, uh, sure, I mean, uh, I think he, and he would agree with this. We, we disagree on issues of substance. Uh, uh, significant issues of substance, um, and we'll probably be debating this uh, in Medfield at the end of the month as well, October 30th, I believe, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Paul's a good guy, and uh, I believe his intentions are great, and he wants to serve as well. Uh, the difference is that he wants to raise taxes. He's gone on record uh, for saying that. Um, I do not. Uh, again, I think uh, partnering with the governor um, making sure we make smart reforms to make state government w live within its means, just like every household and business does. Uh, that's what I'm about, and keeping taxes down. And again, you know, for seniors especially, making sure that um, uh, we give them the relief they need. Uh, promoting small business, uh, another difference. I was endorsed by the uh, National Federation of Independent Business uh, twice now. Um, they represent small businesses, uh, thousands across the country, and. Um, um, proud of that endorsement and uh, my opponent uh, was just uh, just received the lowest rating among all 200 legislators uh, from the associated industries of Massachusetts in terms of business friendliness uh, so that's another difference um, on the issues of uh, um, uh, public safety uh, my opponent uh, this summer uh, May ex uh, May 23rd exactly uh, with some of his colleagues in the Senate voted for a measure that would prohibit our local law enforcement from um, inquiring about citizenship status uh, and also penalizing local law enforcement for doing so. Uh, this is regarding sanctuary cities. Uh, it's a pretty hot topic yep. uh, nationwide. Um, and I disagree with that. Uh, I think we need to give our local law enforcement the tools they need to make sure our communities are safe. So those are some of the big ones that have come up on the trail. Uh, again, taxes, I'm for lowering taxes. I don't think he is. Um, um, and then uh, immigration as well, so. And now, uh, this race obviously, it, it, it has a different feel to it than, than the one we saw last year. Yeah. Talk about some of the differences going into this one. I mean, 
the fact that last year's was kind of an interim position that you guys are running for. This one here, is, it, it's for the seat, you know, yeah. and, and how do you feel differently going into this one? Sure, and I think Paul would agree with me, and I don't want to speak for him, but, uh, you know, last year when Jim Timothy resigned, uh, there were three candidates, and uh, all three of us had to spend every single hour, every single dollar, all of our resources at trying to get people off of their couch and go vote because it was a special Absolutely, election. Absolutely, yep. And uh, ultimately, I think we had, gosh, I think it was 12 or 13 percent turnout, uh, several thousand people. And uh, um, and the big difference, of course, is uh, this November, it's a normal scheduled election. We've got the governor, we've got U.S. Senate, we've got Congress. Um, we're looking at, I think it's probably going to be north of 60,000 additional voters at the polls. Um, so that's a huge difference. So we don't have to spend all of our time uh, trying to drive and people to the polls. We just need to spend our time convincing them to vote for us. Right. Uh, so that's a huge difference, and I think that benefits us. This district is the uh, third most moderate district in Massachusetts, so it's uh, relatively Republican-friendly, and uh, uh, the latest polls have us up. Um, so we're pretty confident, uh, and we're just working hard, knocking on doors and meeting people right until Election Day. So Now, w what are some of the other things you do? Obviously, uh, <laughs> Medfield TV is, is a great advertisement for you, but what are some <laughs> of the other things that you, that you do? Uh, and, and this is more just me being interested in it. What are some of the other things that you do? Uh, on the campaign trail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Um, we have a, I mean, I spend all of my time door knocking. Uh, and uh, that's it. I mean, thousands of doors. I think I've knocked over 20,000 doors it's over 18 months. Uh, so a lot of fuel in the car, a lot of new shoes, um, but that old-fashioned style uh, voter contact still, in my opinion, um, is the most effective way. It's the hardest thing to do. Uh, you know, um, despite all of the new advances in technology and Facebook and social media, that old-fashioned door-to-door is still, I think, the most effective. And to my knowledge, I think I'm the only candidate that has done that um, to this extent. So um, that's what I spend most of my time on. But uh, of course, we raise money. Uh, we do a few events here and there. I visited uh, senior centers throughout the district. Uh, that's always an interesting opportunity. Um, you know, meetings with fire chiefs, police chiefs, uh, veterans groups. Um, so you just really need to be everywhere all at once, and sometimes that's a challenge. Absolutely. Uh, and this district actually is um, uh, from the southern tip of Rehoboth, the most southern point of this district, uh, close to the Rhode Island border, up to Medfield, the most northern point. I think uh, drive time, it's about 40 miles it's north a big, to south. Yeah, so it's a big uh, It can district. be a challenge sometimes to be uh, on time at all the events, but uh, uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, I as far as people, you know, let's say someone watches this and they want to either get involved or help out or find a little more information about you, I know you have a terrific website that's out there. Can Thank you, you. Plug your own website sure, there for a little bit? Sure, it's jacobventura.com, my name, jacobventura.com, and uh, I think you can find me on Twitter at, at jacobventura, and uh, if you need to email us, info at jacobventura.com. And that goes directly to my phone. So, <laughs> yeah, they, and uh, like I said, it's it's a it's a nice website. It, whoever put it together did a really Thank nice you. job. Thank you. Um, and uh, but yeah, it, that's a great way to get in touch with you. Now, uh, as we close this up, um, are there any finishing things that you want to say to the people of Medfield as we kind of tie this all together? Sure. And uh, you know, again, I want to thank the people of Medfield uh, for voting for me twice last year. Um, it was a lot of work. We uh, knocked on thousands of doors. We're still knocking. Uh, right after this interview, we'll be back out there in the rain uh, knocking. Um, and uh, I've had a chance to, to, to spend a lot of time in this community downtown. Um, I love going to Brothers Market, uh, Noon Hill Grill. Uh, I'm a frequent flyer there now. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been an honor. And uh, if elected, uh, it will be a true honor to serve. And that's why I'm doing this, to serve. So uh, I humbly ask for... Uh, uh, the vote uh, of the people of Medfield one more time. So that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Jacob. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank and, you uh, so much. Thank you everyone for watching here. Meet the candidates on Medfield TV, and make sure you go and uh, check out our debate on the thirtieth. But then also go out and vote for the sixth. Thank you so much, Jacob. Thank you. We've dealt with home heating assistance for vet uh, for veterans and seniors. Uh, we've dealt with. Uh, placing children, uh, helping adults place their adult children in supervised daycare. 
uh, with disabilities. Uh, we've received monies for local school projects, uh, whether it's general local aid or uh, roof replacement, window replacement.